Time now for morning rounds, our look at the medical news of the week. First up, healthy aging. Having high blood pressure and more stiffening of the blood vessels are often seen as inevitable byproducts of aging, but can they be avoided? A new report published this week in the journal Hypertension examined data from over 3,000 people who are part of the ongoing Framingham Heart Study. All were aged 50 or older. Overall, they found that only around 18% were considered to exhibit healthy vascular aging. CBS News contributor Dr. Tara Narula is here to tell us more about that study. Welcome, Doc. Good morning, Alex. So first off, what is considered healthy vascular aging? Right, so we've become used to this idea that, well, as we age, our arteries age, they become stiffer and we develop high blood pressure. But that doesn't have to be the case. And when you look at more traditional hunter-gatherer societies, that doesn't happen. So there's something about our Western lifestyle, our diet, that's causing this. So in this report, they defined healthy vascular aging as a blood blood pressure less than 140 over 90 and people who were not on blood pressure medication and something called a pulse wave velocity that was less than 7.6 meters per second. What is a pulse wave velocity? Well, every, <laughs> every time the heart beats and contracts, it generates an energy wave that travels down the circulatory system, in, down the vessels. If you measure that velocity from one point to one point, that will change depending on how stiff the arteries are. So the stiffer the arteries, the faster the velocity. So this is how they looked at that in this report. It's I'm interested, only about 18% were considered to have healthy vascular aging. How does that break down in terms of ages? Well, it doesn't look good for us as we get older, and it is more challenging, especially when you're over 70. So when they broke it down by age, they found that about 30% had healthy vascular aging in their 50s. That dropped to about 7% in your 60s, and only about 1% in the 70s oh, wow. had healthy vascular aging. Is improvement possible, or is this an inevitable part of the aging process? That's one of the good things about this report, is that it gives us hope that yes, it is possible if we alter our lifestyle. And so they found that by keeping yourself trim, having a lower body mass index, avoiding diabetes, and having healthier cholesterol, you could be more likely to have healthy vascular aging. If you're able to meet the life simple seven that the American Heart Association has as goals, if you got six out of seven of those, you were 10 times more likely to have healthy vascular aging as opposed to people who only had zero to one of those goals met. And why is this important? Well, in this report, they found that those who had healthy vascular aging were 55% less likely to develop cardiovascular disease. That's an important statistic. Moving on to our next topic, how willing are we to share our health information with those closest to us? A newly published survey commissioned by Orlando Health looked at that question, comparing results for both men and women. The survey coincides with the Drive for Men's Health initiative, which starts today. Two doctors will hop in a car traveling 3,000 miles to promote men's health. Tara, when it comes to willingness to discuss certain topics, I'm guessing <laughs> that women are better than this than men. You would guess correctly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we know that there is a gender divide when it comes to this. And, you know, there are a lot of theories as to why this this might be and some people say well it's because women are used to getting preventive care from the time they're younger they get pap smears they take their kids to the doctor and men just don't have that same concept from the time they're younger but it is really important and across the board in this report in this survey they did find that men were less willing to discuss things with their family members like high blood pressure like cancer like mental health issues but it's it's a valuable thing because when you discuss these things with your family members you learn about your family history you learn about what your risks are so you you can take preventive steps. In addition, you get support, and social support is so important. Your family can say, I will go to the doctor with you. Let's remember to take your medications. Mm -hmm. We know that people with support systems do better, so very important. What topic most deeply divides the sexes in terms of discussion? Well, there was one topic where they found a big divide, and that was sexual health, and especially in the ages of 18 to 34. Yeah. They found that women were about 34% likely to, to discuss sexual health in that age range, and men were only about 18 percent likely so you know the 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 doctors who are doing this drive they are using social media and they're they're under the hashtag what's under your hood and they <laughs> they, they, they say that this that's is very unsettling that question well you know they, they your make proverbial hood that men are very good about taking their cars to yeah. get maintenance yeah. right, right? Yeah. look under the hood but they're not so great about treating their bodies <laughs> the, the same chassis way. yes yeah. <laughs> all right
breakdown dead ahead. All right, finally, the first Saturday of each month brings our practical advice segment, health situations we all encounter today, managing your medications. Tara, what are some tips that people can keep in mind? Here? I love this topic so much because it's so important. So set timers, uh, set yourself reminders. I like to tell patients, keep your medications where your toothbrush is, where your breakfast cereal is. So it kind of is a reminder as soon as you go in that area. You also want to get uh, early refills so you don't run out. Maybe ask your doctor for a 90-day supply of your medications. You want to schedule medical checkups with your doctor to go over your medicines. So to talk about side effects, to talk about timing. So for some medicines like statins or cholesterol medicines, you have to take them at night. For other medicines like proton pump inhibitors, Nexium and stomach acid reducers, you have to take them in the morning. You also want someone who can sit there and say with you, well, these meds might interact and you know, not everybody is looking at that. Uh, other things, don't just stop your medicine if you don't like it or if you're having side effect. <laughs> a lot of patients do that. Call your doctor and say, I'm yeah. thinking I should stop this. And then most importantly, really keep a list of your medications. I had two patients yesterday who had, evolved, had very good strategies for this. One opened up his phone and showed me an app that had a list of all his medications. I said, that's brilliant. And the second one opened up his phone and had taken pictures of all his medicine bottles. Smart. I thought this is perfect. You don't have to bring them in. Just show me the photos. So it's really important because lots of times they'll show up in the ER at a doctor's office and you say, what medicine are you taking? and they say the little yellow pill and right I have no idea what that, <laughs> that would is be me. so yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's little thing it's blue <laughs> right what's the dosage I have no idea <laughs> you do not want to find yourself in that situation keep the corn pops and the prescriptions near each <laughs> exactly. other or take photos of them <laughs> Dr. Tara Narula thanks for your time thank you